some hundred on the dash Turn it on my blow some cash Hey what's up guys, Danny Fernandez here I am at Addiction Rehab Toronto And if you guys are ever in trouble and need some help This is the place to be It's very comfortable, clean and the staff is Say I should breathe in, breathe, breathe in, breathe in. They say I should breathe in, breathe, breathe in, breathe in. I wanna scream, I wanna shout, calling you out. And I feel I'm blacking out when you win around. Gotta breathe in, breathe, breathe in, breathe in. Yeah, so I've been told that I'm gonna be fine. Looking for the remedy Too many girls that have been given the curve They've been giving out the number Throwing them all in a dumpster And I feeling so sad My name is Damien Delaney I'm the clinical supervisor here at Addiction Rehab Toronto At Addiction Rehab Toronto we, uh, we use a holistic approach A holistic approach would be where we you know, treat our, our clients, our, our loved ones um, on a holistic viewpoint, you know, look, looking at things from a spiritual angle, as well as the biopsychosocial dynamic of addiction. Um, happy to be here. I'm the primary counselor uh, for Danny here, and um, you know, we've been working together for for a little bit here, and uh, you know, happy to know him as a as a person, and um, you know, a real genuine kind of down to earth guy. It's been an honor and a privilege to be a part of his the beginning of his recovery journey. And I think what we're going to do here today is just kind of go through some things, what got him here, what it was like, um, you know, what happened, and um, share some experience, strength, and hope. And, uh, you know, in, in, in a tell-all here. How you feeling, brother? Nervous. A little nervous, yeah? Yeah. Where did the nerves come from? Right from the guts? Yeah. 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 Let let me ask you, like, what got you here? Like, what got me here? As in, like, what was I doing? Like, what was I using? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I was using uh, oxycodone mm -hmm. uh, for quite some time. Yeah. For how long? Say about eight years. Yeah. Yeah, it's a long time. Um, and have you ever wanted to kind of stop on your own or tried to stop on your own before? Or? So many times. Yeah? yeah? What are some of the ways you tried to kind of uh, reel it in? I uh, detoxed myself uh, about five times. Um, probably the worst fucking feeling. I don't wish that feeling on anybody. Mm -hmm. Like even the people who I despise, I would never wish that upon. Yeah, you know. Um, and then after that, I, I I would stay clean for like a week, and then uh, all it takes is that one time where I get stressed out or, or something happens to me, I go right back to that because that's how I knew how to cope with it. You know. Yeah. 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 So, you know, there's a very physical element to you know, opioids and when people are, you know, people on opioids and that, that, that detox process, um, you know, you said you wouldn't wish it upon any of your kind of worst enemies or whatever you want to say. Uh, you know, what, what would be something that would make you kind of go back to that? Something so simple as in me seeing a place where I used to do it or uh, a certain smell, um, anything that would trigger me, I would automatically and, and the triggers they hit you know mm -hmm. in their heart I don't know how to before I got here I wasn't sure how to handle those things mm -hmm. yeah so there'd be some sort of like psychological mental trigger right we would feed some sort of emotion right from there you know we're gonna like expand on that and get into like you know the actual kind of using part of that and then once you use what would be something you would tell yourself Right? Okay, like maybe, like if I may, I'll serve something up for you and you can see if you want to hit it. But, um, you know, if, 
you know, oh, I could just do, I could do one and get through today. Would that be something that would go through your head? No. No? No? What would, what would be something you would mentally kind of tell yourself? Most of the time it's like, why the fuck am I doing this? But um, again, it's like, a, it's something that's more powerful than me, more powerful than anybody that, you know? Mm -hmm. Like even my family, like, they, they would always say to me, like, why can't you just stop? Like if it was that fucking easy, I would just stop. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. But it goes, it goes way deeper than that. Yeah. And, and the depth is, you know, just because we detox, it's no longer in our system. We're not physically yeah. kind of connected to it. Yeah. We're mentally connected to it still, emotionally connected to it. And I'll be emotionally connected to it for the rest of my fucking life. Mm -hmm. Well, it. not if we do it right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But, uh, yeah. So, I mean, that brings us to, like, the other side of it. So what were some of the like, consequences, right, from doing this for the, so many years? DUIs. Yeah. Uh, possession charges. Mm -hmm. um, all the all the things that I never thought would happen to me in my entire life happened to me. Mm -hmm. My family, I, lo I almost lost my fucking whole entire family. Yeah. My kids, my partner. How old are your kids again? Uh, four and ten months. Yeah. 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 And your partner, who you love dearly. Very much so. All right. Yeah. And some of the, the behaviors, you know, those behaviors and these kinds of things, what kind of feelings does that lead to? Guilt. Yeah. Shame. Yeah. You lose, you lose every feeling. Like, I was not feeling anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, with those feelings, what happens is, what do we, what do, we do? We get, it adds on to the stress, right? Yeah. And we end up, do, you know, we need to relieve the way we feel. Yeah. Right? So that there in itself is kind of the cycle of addiction and what we're working through. Yeah. All right. So, I mean, let's bring it back to like all the way to kind of the beginning and, you know, growing up in childhood. A lot of people would say, you know, it's, uh, there's a lot of people that would come from places of, of like abuse and neglect and this kind of stuff, right? But I, I don't think there's any um, particular kind of box that we could put anybody in. This is any, this, you know, this is this disease, right? It doesn't discriminate. Right, and you know, no matter no matter how popular you are, or who you are, or how how high or how low you are, which you know, it doesn't dis discriminate. Right? Tell tell me a little bit about like your upbringing and how that was. I had a great upbringing. I mean, yeah. uh, my older brother is all, he's a, he's an artist as well. Um, my parents spent a lot of time paying attention to him. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, he would be doing, you know, he's singing Portuguese music, he's been, he'd be doing shows and they'd be going away with them. So I'd be, like, my grandparents would take care of me. Um, but, I mean, th they were there, you know? Yeah. Somewhat. Yeah. 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 Sounds like, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty complete. Do you feel like you were getting all your needs met? Uh -huh. All right. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, then we get up, we grow up a little bit and then we start to get into our own kind of, you know, teenage, adulthood relationships, right? And how have those been for you? With my family? No, nope. with like uh, romantic relationships or that uh, kind of stuff. A lot of fuck ups. Yeah. You know? Um, I mean, uh, I was in a relationship for a very long time. Uh, I was engaged actually, and then I don't want to throw any dirt on anyone, but an incident happened where, yeah. um, again, I, before the, even this, I'm going to say something. I always told myself that I was never going to touch a drug in my entire life. And then came that incident. I was 28 years old, I believe. Um, I had gotten my teeth done and the, the dentist prescribed me Percocets. So when that incident happened, I moved out of the apartment we were living together and I took them with me. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was unpacking my stuff in my new place and I saw them and at this point I was fucking devastated, you know, I didn't know what to do with my life. Um, so I saw them and I'm like, I've never tried it before, let me try it. Yeah. Took one. Let me tell you, it was probably the best feeling I've ever felt in my entire life. Unexpectedly. Mm -hmm. And then from there one became two, and then two became four, and then four became eight. So it came to the point where I was taking a fucking 40 a day, mm -hmm. you know, and that's not mm -hmm. healthy for anybody. No. And do you know why that happens? Yeah, you get addicted to it. You, get, you build up a tolerance. Yeah. 
right? So we're always kind of chasing that first little bit. Yeah. But I never felt that feeling ever again. You never felt that feeling ever again, and that's that's the way it is with a lot of a lot of drugs, yeah. right? Okay. So what I'm hearing is, you know, we have we have a life event, right? Mm -hmm. You know, at the same time, I'm getting prescribed from you know for some dental work I got done, right? Life event is painful, yeah. right? I have an escape right here. This feels great. I'm escaping, right? How long did you escape for? Until I was almost dead. Mm -hmm. um, I met um, the mother of my children, my partner now, um, in 2015. And um, I was in Asia doing, uh, when I met her I was using and she wasn't aware of it. Um, and then I did, I did a tour in Asia. I was gone for a month. But I was clean when I was in Asia, but to be honest, bro, I was, all, that was all, I wasn't even focusing on my work. Mm -hmm. um, all I wanted to do was what I was doing, right? So yeah. um, when I came back, it was like two days later, um, she was at work, and it was late at, at night, I think, I don't really remember, um, but she was calling me, and I wasn't answering my phone. So she left work and came home. Um, and found me on the floor in her condo. I had overdosed. Um, I was in a coma for seven days. She was pregnant at the time. And uh, the paramedic or the, the hospital told them to call my family to come to the hospital saying that I wasn't going to make it through the night. Um, I was in a coma for seven days. I woke up. I couldn't walk, I couldn't talk. I had lost probably 80% of my memory. Um, and I spent about well, four months in a hospital and then another two months in a, a rehab in Toronto so I could learn how to walk again and talk. Uh, I was like a fucking newborn baby, you know? And mm -hmm. she was there by my side the whole entire time, carrying my child. No, um, and even that didn't stop me. After I got out of the hospital, I went to um, uh, I went right back at it. It didn't, it didn't scare me enough to, to make me stop. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, there's this kind of there's a saying when when love is not enough, right? I didn't know what love was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you think you're learning about love to this point right now? I'm learning how to love myself again. I got, I've done a lot of fucking shitty things, man. Things that I am not proud of. Um, that I'm trying to learn how to get past. I mean, I don't think you could ever get past it. It's going to always be with you, but I'm, I'm learning how to deal with it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know? Yeah. Well, we can use our experience, right, to help others along the way. And I think that's something, you know, you showing your vulnerability here today and, and doing this, this, I think, you know, that's the beginning of it for you, right? We use our experience to help others, right? So we don't really, you know, we don't shut the door on it. We don't try to just forget about it, right? Because we never want to forget where that, where that stuff took us. How do you think it impacted your family? Uh, like I, watching an overdose and all that kind of, like along the way? I can't even imagine what my family was going through. Mm -hmm. I, after it happened, I, I felt not sorry for me, I felt sorry for them, you know? Mm -hmm. like, I can't imagine seeing my kid in the hospital like that. Like knowing that he could possibly be on his deathbed. Mm -hmm. um, They were so angry at me. Mm -hmm. A lot of the trust was broken. Constant lies. You know, I mean, I'm a fucking addict. Mm -hmm. That's all I know how to do. Yeah. In addiction, okay, we have who we think we are, right? And addiction takes that from us, right? A lot of the work we've done is on our values and this kind of stuff and, and reclaiming who I am. Our values are who makes us who we are, 
Okay? So what would you say some of your values were or are, right, that you kind of betrayed? Everything. I lost all my values when I was eating. Mm -hmm. What would they be? Because your values are going to be different than mine. That's what makes me Damien, and, that, and that's what makes you Danny, right? Honesty. Honesty, yeah. Trust. Loyalty. Yeah. Honor. Respect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when we, when we break those things down, right, now they become targets for us, right? So what, what we're talking about is self-betrayal. When I, when I betray all these things, I'm betraying myself, right? So, you know, you made a decision to kind of like, I need to rediscover who I am, right? But I don't want to put, like, just kind of tuck away on the fact that, you know, we did, you know, betray ourselves, right? So how did you, how did you betray yourself? By going against my values. Yeah. No. And usually we do that, and it could be because when we go against our values, then all of a sudden there's a huge void. Right? Did you feel that void? Yeah. yeah. And then how did you, what did you do to fill that void? Fuck. Get fucked up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I disrespected a lot of people. If you could see some of those people or say anything to some of those people, what would you say? But that wasn't me. Yeah. yeah. And it's you know, and it wasn't you. And it's not in the way of kind of like a cop out or an excuse or anything like that, because these are decisions you decided to pick up again. Right? So we always must re remain accountable. Right? But now you're doing something that you've never really done before, becoming accountable and vulnerable in a different way in order to find a new path where we don't need to betray our value system, which is betrayal of self, anymore. Does that make sense? So what happened? What was the... What was the bottom? Like, I didn't think there was a bottom underneath the bottom, but there was a bottom underneath the bottom. Mm -hmm. I lost everything. I lost my career. Um, something I've worked my whole entire life to get. Yeah. No, I, I was very lucky to have what I had. I took advantage of it. I took advantage of a lot of people. Is there a singul sing singular event that, like, the straw that broke the camel's back, like, I need to go to fuck the rehab? Yeah. Yeah? Probably when I almost lost my fucking kids. Mm -hmm. My kids need me, man. I need them. <laughs> what, kind of, what kind of value system do you want to instill into your kids, into your children? Okay. Maybe we don't want them to be like the sick Danny. Alright? But let's not forget who Danny is like when he's not betraying himself. It's hard because addiction, you know, we become parents in addiction and then you know, we think we're there because we're there, but we're not there because all I'm thinking about is what? Shit, I'm not supposed to think about. So one thing I'm going to promise you, you know, by coming here, right, by being at Addiction Rehab Toronto, you're going to have choice again. Right? You're going to have choice. Do you pick yourself up? Right? Do you get back to living honesty, honestly, with loyalty, with respect for self and others, right? Right. The reason I ask for a, I, I ask about a bottom is because if we don't understand that we've hit the bottom, then we're not going to come up. We're not going to rise. 
So how's your experience here been so far? Amazing. Mm-hmm. Everyone's fucking great. Very supportive. Even my peers, even the other people that are here that are just like me. I hope they're helping me too. Like hearing everyone's stories and shit like that. Like I'm, it makes me feel like I'm not the only one going through this. Mm-hmm. And out of here it's hard because no one understands. Right? Mm-hmm. Unless you're an addict, you're not going to understand. Yeah. You know, and, and we've talked about this as well before. You know, the the whole kind of you know the music industry. You're 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 the center of attention, right? You're you're expected to be this certain persona, and then how how much do we allow that persona to bleed over into my everyday life? And I think that's an important piece, right? So when it comes to like who 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 does Danny Fernandez want to be and who is he, right? That's where we get real about shit, right? It's not about like who they need me to be, right? And I think that's why we want to do this. It's about who Danny Fernandez really is. I don't even know who Danny Fernandez is anymore. Mm -hmm. Like I was so caught up in being that other person that I forgot what it was to be like the regular person, you know? Yeah. Are you learning though? Yeah. Yeah. So what have you learned about yourself so far? That I have all those values. Yeah. I can be honest, I can be loyal, I can be respectful, I can be I can be the best person in the world. You can be the best version of yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So it's pretty incredible how addiction pulls us out of us. And we become these fucking monsters or whatever you want to call it, right? We lie, cheat, steal, whatever. We, we don't, you know, it's kind of like we get addicted to other things, right? The lifestyle comes with the lifestyle comes with the lifestyle and it layers up, right? So we're peeling back the layers here to get to like the foundation of who Danny Fernandez is. And it's, and then we're going to rebuild. And as we're rebuilding right now, it's going to be, you know, a better version, the best version of yourself for you, your kids, your partner, your parents, your brother, all of it. Yeah. I did. I was such a bad person, bro. Did some shitty things. Are you at a place yet where you want to forgive yourself? There. We're getting there, right? There's stages to forgiveness. And all the people I was blaming. Yeah. For things that weren't their fault. Mm hmm. Like it's now like I'm come to realize all the shit, you know. When you're using, you don't give a fuck about anything. Mm -hmm. You feel like you're invincible, you know. And the minute you stop, when you start getting your head clear, you realize all the fucking shit that you did, and it fucking hurts, bro. Because that's what those people saw, right? Yeah. You didn't see anything else. And now to rebuild those relationships is going to take a lot of fucking time. Mostly with my partner. That's mm -hmm. guaranteed. You know? I don't know how the fuck she stood by that shit. I would have left the wrong fucking time. Well, maybe because she sees the true you. Even when you can't. What do you think it's going to take to become that guy again? A lot of work. Mm hmm. What kind of work? Step work, these books, yeah. groups, meetings. Like after here, mm -hmm. I have to maintain what I was doing in here out there. Yeah. Because if I don't, I'm going straight back to that shit. Yeah. But I also need the people that are out there who are going to be around me all the time to understand. You know, there's going to be boundaries. That need to be set in order for me to get <coughs> the recovery I need. You know, I deserve it. Yeah, you do. A lot of people out there might think I don't. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to be patient with our recovery and we're going to, you know, you know how you were talking a little bit about, like, you know, when you had your overdose? Um, it was like you had to be born again and relearn everything. Well, it's kind of like that right now again, too.
we're going to continue to work on letting go, but not forgetting, just let making room for some of the good to come on back. Got a heart of gold, man. I see, I see you around here trying to help others and extend yourself. But one thing I know for sure, right, is like we can't give away what we don't have. What are your goals? Helping others. What are your goals emotionally? To feel loved again. Yeah. To love and to be loved. And what about physically? What are some of your physical goals? I've gained a lot of weight since I've been here. I mean, you look a lot better than when you walk through the doors, right? I feel a lot better. First, first time. Where do you got to be spiritually? If I use the word spiritually fit, what does that mean to you? Interpret that. Means I gotta be spiritually fit to take on things outside of these walls. Mm -hmm. And where's your spirit? Right inside. And mentally? Stable. Stable. Right. Ready to, ready to take on some storms. Yeah, big ones. Right. Yeah. They're only storms. They're going to pass. They're going to come. And they're going, they're going to come. <laughs> they're going to come to pass. Yeah. Right. So no longer does our kind of stress meter get us to the breaking point, right? Because stress is okay. Yeah. Usually if we, if we have stress, it's like an opportunity for actually for us to grow, right? Yeah. You know that, we talked a lot about that. I also want to bring to the attention that, um, as I said, in my relationship prior to when that yeah. had me start this, yeah. I always said that I was never going to do that to another person. And I did it mm -hmm. to the person who stood by me for six years. Mm -hmm. And these things happen when we're spiritually bankrupt. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about, when we're spiritually fit. Yeah. Right? But it still doesn't make it okay. No, it's not okay. Because it goes against what? Values. Your values. It goes against who you are. That's not you as a person. Luckily you're alive, you can make things right. Yeah. I'm not a thief. Hmm? I'm not a thief. I'm not a cheater. You know? Mm -hmm. uh, I just want people to know that. If that's not who I am, I wasn't raised that way. I will blame that on the drugs. 100%. There's no other excuse for that. You know, we mentioned about, you know, the, the journey of recovery. And in the journey of recovery, you know, we kind of hit this place where all of a sudden we, we gain mental clarity, we gain positivity. Um, you know, not everything's going to be positive, but our outlook changes. Mm -hmm. Okay? How's your outlook changed? Fuck, everything's changed. Yeah. You know, the way I view myself, the way I view even my fucking vocabulary is different. Mm -hmm. Even when I speak to people, it's different. Yeah. You know, like things I would have. I'm happy I became an addict. It's the best thing that ever happened. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. I, this is, the things I'm learning in here, I would never would have learned. Yeah. You know? It's a real gift because we get we get the opportunity. You know, we. it's a lot of pain and a lot of banging our head off the wall and scrapes and bruises and bumps and all that stuff. But it gets us to a place like this, yeah. right? Where we learn, we can laugh again. Right? Like genuinely belly laughs. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've laughed in here like tears laughs. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. like laughs I haven't had in a very long time. Yeah. yeah. You've made, um, you know, and then it, think about like, okay, as we, as we learn to laugh in here and as we build up that kind of that joyous kind of feeling, how do we carry that out of here? And then, you know, and how is that going to benefit you as a father and as a partner? I mean, like I said, there's things I learned in here that I would end up and learn if I wasn't in here. Yeah. Like even like like my values. I didn't know what the fuck my values were. Mm -hmm. I can I can teach my kids like you know to set boundaries mm -hmm. for certain things to to teach them their values like their honesty. Like I tell my daughter all the time that she lies sometimes. She's a kid. She's four. Yeah. Uh, but even so, I say it's not nice to lie. You know. Mm -hmm. um, you always get caught. Yeah. No matter what. You know. Yeah. The problem is when you lie so much, you start believing your own shit. Yeah. Like I've been caught in multiple fucking lies because I. Yeah. You know, lie so much that I forget the lies that I'm telling. Yeah. 
Um, so I've learned in here that just don't fucking lie. Yeah. So Which allows you to live freely. Yeah. Right? Yeah, no yeah. stress. Right? Yeah, no stress. Even if it's something you just don't want to tell anybody. Yeah. You know, do something bad. Mm -hmm. going up to it, you know? Mm -hmm. So what do you look forward to the most, like with your newfound freedom and newfound outlook? To building relationships, you know? Like the bridges were burned, I'm trying to put the fire out. Yeah. You know? Um, I, I have strong hope that it's possible to do that. I mean, it's going to be a whole brand new person once I'm out here. Absolutely. Yeah. We're already looking at a transformation. Yeah. When I say the word success, yeah. right? I'm, I'm guessing what success meant to you at one point, has, ha, uh, what it means to, to you now, is probably two different things. How, how has it changed? To be honest, music has been my life yeah. since I was a kid. Yeah. But I can honestly say that I would be satisfied if it stopped. Mm -hmm. Success to me right now would be my family. Just having a happy life. You know? mm -hmm. um, my kids are going to get older, I'm not going to be around forever. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to teach them as much as I can until I can't anymore. You know what I mean? I want to see my fucking kids get married. Yeah. So I hope to not any guys like me, though. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> I pray to God. Um, with, with a guy like you were, right? Because, I mean, it, yeah. takes a lot, it takes a lot of courage and a lot of strength and a lot of hope to kind of make these changes. Yeah. And that's what makes recovery so fucking special, brother. Yeah. It's not everybody's going to do it. No, not everybody can, can do it. Yeah, you know How many people it. say, I want it, I want it, I want it. But if you don't do the work, yeah. like... Yeah. Do but, the work. That's yeah. Say. And no one that doesn't want to stop is not going to stop. Yeah. You know, like, there's so many times in my head, I was like, oh, I'm going to fucking stop. And the next day came, actually. It didn't mm -hmm. happen. Yeah. yeah. Um, but everyone's going to reach that bottom, and that's what, if they decide to, that's the end, then they're going to stop. Mm -hmm. If they don't, then they're going to just go... To build a grave. Yeah. yeah. So for people to start, you know, changing their outlook towards recovery, what would you say to them? Get help. Talk to someone. You know. Um, come to a place like this, where you feel safe, where everyone is the most kind and you know, welcoming people. That, have, to be honest, you guys welcome me like I came in here fucked up. You know, but I, I, I still was able to openly accept what was happening. Yeah, you know, I knew where I was going. I knew where I was coming. I knew what I was getting myself into. Yeah. Sure, I was scared a few for days. Like I didn't leave my fucking room for a couple first days. You know. Yeah. Um, but once I got out of my room, start going to groups, start going to meetings, meeting everybody. Like I have friends in here, like legit friends. You know. Yeah. Friends who I hope do well when they get out of here. Yeah. Like I care for these people. A big part of what you're saying there is, you know, making friends and stuff. And when we talk about recovery, we talk about unity. Yeah. And it doesn't matter like where we came from, right? Some people come here from the streets, yeah. right? Some people are coming here from so, from some fame, Barry, <laughs> or Aurora. even Barry, Aurora, <laughs> or whatever, Newfoundland, yeah, all, yeah. all over the yeah, place, right? right. Um, but it, it doesn't matter like where we came from, what what uh, like economic status we're in, yeah. right? We're all in the fucking water. Yeah, we're all sick, and we all want we all want a life raft. Stay on your boat. Yeah. And that's why, you know, it's important, you know, to me, right, for guys like you to pass along this message. Yeah. Right? And I'll, I'll pass the message to as many people as I possibly can. This is another reason why I'm doing this. Yeah. Like, there is help out there for mm -hmm. anybody who needs it. Mm -hmm. You just gotta want it. Yeah. You gotta want to do the work or else you ain't, you ain't gonna get shit. Mm -hmm. What did it take for you, what, like, to come to before you could ask for the help or reach out and get the help? What, like, uh, what, did you, what did you have to put aside? Like, enough is enough. Yeah. You know? I was already dead once. I'm not going to get another chance. Yeah. Straight up. That yeah. happens to me again, I'm gone. Yeah. A lot of times, ego and pride get in the way. and that kind of... the worst. I had the biggest ego. Yeah. You know what I mean? Came in here like, fuck. Mm. I came in here and I, I was hoping that no one was going to recognize me. But that, <laughs> the minute I walked that door, it was like, fuck. <laughs> It's hard, it's hard to shake the persona, right? Yeah. Right? But uh, do you feel like you, you're allowed to just be you here? Yeah. Yeah. And I don't think anybody expects anything more than you just being you. No. Because, cause like... They don't treat me differently. Yeah. The, the, the Danny we get to see here is like a real solid dude, you yeah. know? So that's a, that's a lot of fun for us. Yeah. It's yeah. free. Yeah. I don't need to like kind of support my own 
um, indecisions. I don't need to support my lives. I don't need to support it's, it's those not, things. Not being connected with the outside world because it's a lot of distraction. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You're, you don't want to be connected. Yeah. If nothing changes, nothing changes. Exactly. Right. And I, it, you know, I mean, I've seen a lot of change in you. And I see you becoming like a little brighter every, every few days. I see you when somebody new is shaking, coming into detox. You kind of say, "Hey, this guy needs this. This guy needs that," and you're looking out for others. Is that somebody that's like be still living in selfishness and ego? No, no. That's somebody who's making the change to recovery because recovery is about connection. And when you're a performer, right? What are you trying to do? Make everyone good, make everyone happy. Yeah, put some cheer and some spunk into the well, crowd, right? I need to make right? myself happy now. Right. Before I can make anyone happy. So this, is a per this was a perfect opportunity for yeah. you to kind of just reconnect with self. Yeah. And then from there, now I'm bringing myself to things instead of things bringing themselves to me. Yeah, exactly. When I say the word joy to you, what does that mean now? As the joy would be me leaving here and going home to my children and just seeing me. My kids, my daughter is four, um, but when I got out of here, I can tell you she's going to be the happiest kid in the world. Like I talked to her on the phone, she's like, Daddy, are you better yet? You know what I mean? Like she misses me. I miss her. So, you know, even though we can buy them all the Disney movies, all the, they do all these things, they have all the toys, all the stuff, they just want us there with them. 100%. And when we're talking about, when we're talking about joy, right, that's the ultimate joy. Yeah. Especially as a father. Yeah. And as a partner. Right, what brings joy to you as a partner? Being appreciated, being loved. Now you're in a position to bring Danny out to people. Yeah. Right? I'm so what are you bringing? I'm just a fucking, I'm a generous guy, bro. You see me over here. Mm -hmm. Get yeah. my shirt off my fucking back. Yeah. But that's not what it's about. Um, caring for people. You know, being honest with people. Yeah. Loving people. Mm -hmm. Being loyal to people. Responsible. Responsibility. Fuck, I lost all that. Right? Shit. I know. But that's okay because it got you here. Yeah. And that's why we become grateful to be here, right? Yeah. Gratitude in action. Yeah. Huh? And, you know, a question probably we haven't asked for a long time is, you know, when it comes to our relationships, is what do you need? Because right. it's always been about what I need. What do I need? No. You're gonna ask, like, you're gonna I'm ask, ask your loved you're gonna be in a position to ask your loved ones what they need. What do you think your loved ones need? My kids are gonna want everything. I just gonna have to explain to them that it's not the way my life works. Um, my partner, she doesn't really need much, man. I mean, she wants my honesty. She wants my love. She wants my affection. She wants my attention. That's a lot. But that's easy to give. It's free. Those are things that I'm capable of giving her. No. Nah. So we talked a little bit about, you know, what you, what, uh, you know, the kids need, uh, what your partner needs. What, the, what does, now that, you know, Danny has a good, you know, sense of control on his own life, what does Danny need? I just want the same thing from her that she wants from me. Mm-hmm. Fair. Yeah. Not even from her. Nothing for you to provide it for yourself. Yeah. Yeah, you keep going. So what are you gonna need to show yourself? Patience we talked about earlier. Right? You. Yeah. Definitely you. Yeah. The twelve step book. Guaranteed I gotta read that shit every night. A C A N A. Yeah. This kind of stuff. Yeah. Meetings. Meeting, yeah. At nine thirty in the morning Zoom call you guys do every Sunday. Yeah. The ten thirty one on Monday. Yeah. Nine thirty one on Monday, sorry. Um, just keep working on my fucking recovery, man. It's never any fucking battle. You know? Yeah. You need to give yourself some, some self-compassion. Yeah. Right? Self-compassion. Yeah. We're, we're done dragging ourselves through the mud, right? Mm -hmm. So self-compassion, meaning like, you know, mindfulness, being mindful of what's going on, mindful of how I'm feeling. Yeah. Right? Which is, I know, is something you're working on. Yeah. Kind of, you know, not so much we're going to become monks, rather, but... You know, or to be honest, but since I've been in here, man, I've, I've been feeling emotions that I haven't felt in the last fucking 20 years. Yeah. You know? Um, I, I've been crying in groups. 
Yeah. Like a fucking baby. Yeah. Like, like shit's hitting me like, like I'm getting slapped. Yeah. You know? We give ourselves also understand that we're, we are human, we're common humanity. Yeah. Right? So. We are all the same. No one's different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Final words. If I want to first want to thank Art, Dictionary of Toronto, for taking me in and, and saving me. You know, you. Uh, I will help anybody who needs help. Um, just reach out. You know, ask me a question. If I can help you, I'll help you. Um, Instagram, Mr. Danny Fernandez. Twitter, Danny Fernandez. Um, don't be shy. See, I should be breathing in, breathing I'm just trying to make sense of it all